Hey, Julian, thanks for joining me. So we're here to talk about UV or, or UV. I, I forget what you told me how you pronounce it, but uh, the new Python package manager. So uh, yeah, what is it? Yeah, I believe it's called UV. So UV is a new uh, package manager for Python. And if we've been using Python, you know that when, when you're creating a Python project, you sort of need a tool to manage the dependencies of your project. So all the other libraries and tools that you use and create virtual environments where they get installed into it. And there's like a whole range of tools for that. And there's been a new one that was released earlier this year uh, called UV. Um, yeah, and uh, I guess it's becoming quite popular. And the reason I've heard about it is uh, that it's fast. Is there other, like, is that the main thing driving adoption? Or do you know? Yeah, I think that's definitely one of the reasons why it's so popular. So I've seen a statistic that um, already in less than a year, almost 10% of the downloads from PyPI, the Python package index, are coming from the UV tool. So it's seen tremendous growth in that short time. And yeah, definitely one of the main reasons is it says really, really fast. But the other thing what's really nice about UV is, is their stated goal is to be the, the one-stop shop for all your Python tooling needs. So they want to be the cargo uh, what is Cargo to Rust? They want to be that tool for Python. So if you use Cargo in Rust, um, because that tool's been there from the beginning, it sort of solves all your needs. You always know when you go and download a, a Rust project, you will know how to build it, how to test it, how to run it, because it's always done through the same tool. And that's what they want to achieve with UV as well. And I think besides being fast, that's like also one of the, the driving factors why it's becoming so popular. Yeah, I think that's super important like i hope it takes off because i love python uh like it's it's a great way for me to build something quick like there's always the right library that i need uh but like the tooling you know it started with pip and then there's virtual environments and now i i tend to use poetry but some people use conda and it's like there's so many tools um and then you mentioned rust but I, but i think of go as well or just like newer languages where they have like a very cohesive uh, approach to like, here's how you build your project. There is one tool, it, you know, it does the testing, it does the dependencies, it does the packaging. Like you always, you don't have to worry about, you know, oh, should I use this? This person's using that. Uh, I just, I hope that Python gets that. Like it really, it really deserves it and needs it, I guess. But um, yeah, so why it, is it fast? Is it fast just because it's Rust or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Rust helps, but Rust is not uh, a magic thing that makes tools or programs fast. But Rust itself itself gives uh, programmers a lot of ability to influence or like how you write the low-level details of your program. And it helps you, it gives you the tools to build fast programs. Uh, but so the UV team has sort of made a lot of smart choices uh, trying to make UV as fast as possible. And so there's a lot of details that go into that to, to make sure things are speedy. So for example, um, how you parse and compare version numbers. You can imagine if you download a package uh, and then find all its dependencies, you are looking at a lot of version numbers and have to compare them. And so if you put a lot of effort into making those things fast, you can gain a lot of uh, speed improvements there. And then there's things about being smart about how you find various bits of metadata. So um, in a Python package, you you have a Python package is a zip file. In that zip file is a, a metadata file that con contains information about all the dependencies of that package. So if you want to know what you need to install, you first need to sort of assemble a, a graph of all your dependencies. Mm -hmm. And to get that information, you first have to grab the zip file, look into it, and then um, go from there. But so what UV did is, instead of first downloading the whole zip file, what they'll do is download just the metadata file by looking at the index of the zip file, figuring out whether the metadata file is, grabbing just those bytes from the download location, and then they have the metadata without having to download the whole uh, zip. Yeah, I can but, see that really speeding things up. And like maybe it, one thing I know, it's not clear as a Python user, well, sometimes it is, is that like 
it oftentimes you have to pull down a dependency and then see what its dependencies are because you're trying to find a set of dependencies that all depend on the same uh like second level dependency or something right because you can't you can't have two projects that use the two different versions of the same thing so you the, so uv is probably yeah. actually you know trying out different packages to find the the, the golden set or something right Absolutely. And in Python, it's particularly complicated because, yeah, not only can you not have two versions of the same library in your project, you have to find one that matches all the all the package requirements across your whole set of packages and sub packages and so on. But you can also make a dependency sort of conditional with so-called markers. Like a project can say, oh, if I'm running on Python 3.12, I need this version of this library. But if I'm running on a later version, I need another version. And if I'm running on Windows, I need this additional package, but on Linux, I don't need it at all. So that adds another layer of complexity to it. And um, yeah, figuring out how to do this package resolution in a fast way is really complicated and it needs a lot of time and effort to get there. But UV somehow managed it. Yeah, well, the zip thing makes sense because yeah, if they can just avoid having to download every zip file for all of these options and can just actually pull the the requirements out of there, uh, I can see why that could speed it up. Um, I think before you mentioned to me something about how it stores things on disk helps make it faster. Yeah, I think that's the key thing, the key element to how you VO so fast. Uh, especially when recreating virtual environments. Um, they have a very smart caching strategy. Uh, what they do is when a package gets first downloaded, what's cached is not this download, this zip file, but already a unpacked version is already uh, cached. And then in your project, this is simply linked in. So that avoids a lot of uh, copying files around and, and moving things around and unpacking them again. Instead, you can just link it. And so if a package is being installed multiple times, um, it's just the first time that you actually have to go download it and unpack it. Yeah, I can see why. For, is there like for common dependencies where that would save a lot of, of disk space, I guess, and time, because yeah, you don't have to unpack it, you just kind of link it in. Um, so you are a core engineer here at Pulumi. So like, why does Pulumi care about this new packaging uh, tool for Python? So for Pulumi, Pulumi is available in a lot of different languages. So Python is just one among them. And I think it's really important for Pulumi to be where the developers already are. We want to fit into your existing workflows. We want to be compatible with the tools that you use. So if you're using Python, we want to make sure Pulumi works great with Python. And if you use uh, UV as your package manager, then we want to make sure everything integrates neatly with that as well. We don't want to enforce a certain workflow or a certain way how you manage your packages or projects on you, right? We want to fit in nicely. And uh, and you've done that, right? I think that we, we now have support. Um, maybe you want to give us a demo? Yes. So on my screen here, I'll create a new uh, Pulumi Python project with Pulumi New Python. Uh, Python is a, a template, and we have lots of them. Uh, there's also certain templates for various cloud providers. This year, we'll just install a bare Python project with Pulumi. Uh, I have this wizard that will ask me a couple of questions like project name, description, uh, name. And finally, it will ask me what tool chain to use. And previously, we supported pip and poetry. And now we also support UV. So I'll go ahead and choose UV here. And it will install the dependencies. And you already saw this was really fast. Look at that. Right, yeah. Uh, so everything was already downloaded. Um, but what I can do is go and add another dependency. If I added my uh, Pi project Tommel. So let's say I want to use the Pulumi random provider, which can be used to generate like random sequences and passwords and so on. So I added this dependency to my project here, and I'll run Pulumi install again. And this will internally call UV uh, to, re, uh, to add the missing dependencies. And you see there within uh, a few milliseconds, it managed to do Whoa. that. Yeah, it's not. It's 
it's remarkable to me. Maybe people who don't work in Python and aren't used to seeing like this like slow moving pip thing don't appreciate that. But wow, that's awesome. Um, so very cool. And uh, yeah, I guess thanks for your time, Julian, and thanks for working on this feature.